Yeah, NRB has uh, recently brought out the monetary policy for fiscal year 2022-23 on last Friday on 22 July. Obviously, the major objective of uh, this monetary policy uh, is uh, price stability as well as the external sector stability. Uh, considering the current situations of some uh, declining foreign currency reserves, and higher inflations. Uh, we have uh, adopted a number of measures uh, in this monetary policy. Uh, yeah, this time we have pressure on external sector, foreign currency re reserves, and uh, pressure on inflation. There is inflationary pressure. Obviously, the, uh, to control aggregate demand from, uh, from controlling uh, pressure from the demand side, uh, we need to raise uh, our policy rate. That's why we raise the policy rate by 1.5 percentage in this time. Uh, obviously, that will uh, increase the uh, cost of uh, borrowing for the time being, uh, but it will help to uh, maintain the macroeconomic stability. Uh, obviously, credit helps uh, to achieve growth, but the uh, is, uh, uh, but the growth is determined by many different factors. Credit is only one factor. If you can uh, look at the past, uh, or if you can look at the history, uh, some past data, we had a uh, uh, private sector credit growth of on an average 19%, but our economic growth is just about 4 to 5% average economic growth. So in our case, uh, credit growth hasn't been supporting the economic growth. That's why uh, just lowering the credit growth target uh, doesn't mean that it will lower the uh, economic growth because economic growth depends on other factors also. And the, if credit growth goes to the productive sectors, then the even lower credit growth can enhance the economic growth. Uh, whether it will be achievable or not is a different factors because the growth is a uh, determined by very different uh, factors. It's the credit is only one, as I said earlier. Uh, but it's still, uh, given the other things like the maybe next this current year, we are going to have the additional 700 megawatt of hydropower uh, project, complete completion of this hydropower project, and the, already the economic activities are going on. We are in the post-COVID scenario, and uh, uh, all of these things uh, can still promote the economic growth uh, of above average. Uh, and maybe they still the many industries are under utilizing their, they, are not, they have, haven't been utilizing their capacity. So if they can utilize their capacity, then still we can achieve the above average economic growth. I don't say we can achieve exactly the 8% growth, but it will be still, still a strong growth. And uh, from the pr other perspective, perspective like we have to also look at the uh, external sector, balance of payment. If you want to uh, grow at a very higher rate, obviously the, we are the very import dependent economy. So higher growth demands the higher import and the higher import needs higher foreign currency reserves. And the, in this context, we are uh, having some pressure on the foreign currency reserves. So if we uh, go for uh, further increase in imports, Obviously, that will put the further pressure on our foreign currency reserves. And at that time, we may not be able to import uh, whatever we need for our higher growth. So this time may not be the good time. Uh, this year may not be the good year of for targeting higher economic growth. Obviously, the, we are having the higher, very high import. That's the one factor. And the import is high due to the, obviously, the uh, it's a higher uh, import in quantity as well as some price because the rising price like the petroleum price because of that our main imported items is petroleum products which, which uh, contributed about 16 to 17 percent of the total imports. So because of that our import volume has been very high in the last just, uh, just completed uh, fiscal year. Uh, so uh, it's, a, uh, it's a challenging how to control, how to stabilize the uh, import volume. And uh, if we, uh, I don't think, uh, obviously the, our remittance has been increasing, uh, but the, 
uh, this emittance is not enough to uh, cover this uh, elevated level of uh, imported uh, imports. Obviously, uh, government has uh, put the restrictions on some 10 items. Obviously, given the international rules, uh, we may not be able to uh, completely put the import restrictions. And obviously, uh, import restrictions can hamper the uh, price in the, uh, in the market as well as welfare of the consumer also. Uh, that may not be uh, also the uh, good way. So we have to focus on internal production and we have to reduce the consumptions from our perspective. Obviously, that could be uh, due to the maybe due to higher price. Uh, then the, given the higher price, uh, we hope that the people consume or demand less in the economy. Uh, yes, so far uh, we have enough. Uh, we have the so far the latest figures so that we have the uh, foreign currency reserves enough for covering imports of uh, goods and service for 6.7 months, which is kind of ideal. But we need to be uh, more cautious uh, on that the, it shouldn't decrease further. It shouldn't decrease further. For that, we have taken a number of measures. That's why we, uh, we have adopted the tight monetary policy stance so that the higher interest rate can curtail the uh, demand and that, de that demand reduce the imports. That's why we are thinking. Uh, and obviously the higher interest rate attracts more uh, remittances as well as people will uh, go for more saving and that's the way we are thinking. Uh, obviously if uh, we, we are closely monitoring how it goes, how it goes uh, and uh, if the situation demands obviously we need to adopt the other additional measures also uh, to prevent the further depletion of foreign currency reserves. Yeah, that has uh, obviously the, some pro positive and negative implications. In recent days, uh, Indian currency has been falling against the US dollar and our currency also in line with that also has been uh, depreciating. And that has some pros and cons. Obviously, the, uh, that, that will make the imports in dollar term costlier. I think uh, that is good for us uh, to, to solve the our external pressure to, to some extent and the, that higher uh, dollar rate, dollar exchange rate can uh, attract the more remittance inflow that is the, some positive, uh, positive impact from the depreciations. But the one negative side obviously the burden of the government to pay the foreign loan will increase and obviously the uh, price of the imported goods will increase and that's why the, there will be more pressure on inflation. That are the negative consequences of these uh, depreciations.